The Green Party have declared their candidate for the Cavan Monaghan constituency to run in the next general election. Still waiting on a date though, but his name is Michal O'Callaghan. He's from Ballinode in County Monaghan and he joins us on the line now. Michal, I suppose I'll ask you firstly, why the Green Party? Sure. Well, I've been a member of the Green Party since 2007 and in that time I've also been involved in a number of uh, environmental community organisations. So in Monaghan, uh, I was involved in setting up Transition Monaghan, uh, an organisation which helps to promote uh, local sustainability and resilience. And at national and European level, I've also been involved in Friends of the Earth. And I suppose I decided to stand because I think that... um, you know, we're at a crucial time in our development uh, as a country, but also, uh, uh, you know, on a wider on a wider level as a planet. We face a number of major challenges over the next number of years, and I feel that uh, we need a green voice back in the, in Dáil Éireann, um, something we haven't for five years. And I think that this current government, uh, their record on um, uh, pretty much everything really, um, on on the economy, on the environment. Um, and on sustainable development has been has been appalling and it's setting us up for uh, major problems, major economic, social and environmental problems in the future. So uh, I suppose as a younger person, that, that makes me very concerned. Um, so I, I, that, it's, I suppose it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a belief in the need for, I suppose, visionary and long-term thinking uh, in politics, which has made me uh, decide to put my... Uh, put my name forward for the nomination in Cavan Monaghan. And what do you think your chances are? Um, well, I, I mean, I, I know that uh, there's never been a, a Green TD uh, elected in, in, in Cavan Monaghan. Uh, I know that uh, we have, at the moment, zero TDs, Green TDs in Dáil Éireann. Um, however, um, I'm going to, I'm fighting the campaign to win. Uh, I believe that the, the issues on which I'm uh, on which uh, I'm contesting it are more relevant now than ever before. Um, so, uh, I mean, you know, I would I would ask I would ask people to decide uh, to decide their vote based on my uh, based on my I suppose my priority areas based on their own um, based on their own priority areas and also I suppose based on uh, my own track record. Uh, and um, do you think, you know, just what you cited there about no TD in the Dáil at the moment, are you up it? Are you up again it before, um, before you even start, Michal? Um, well, it's certainly, it's certainly a challenge uh, in, in the sense that I suppose it, it, it's, it's been more difficult for us to get, uh, maybe to get media coverage in recent years. But it's also an opportunity as well, I think, because if you look at the, uh, if you look at the choice at the moment uh, on, on the on the menu, uh, I suppose the political menu, um, it's not it's not particularly it's not particularly appealing. I mean, just just for example, and we you know, um, in terms of I suppose environmental and, and social development policies. I mean, in the last five years, the government has introduced a, basically a toothless you know climate bill or climate act. Um, they've uh, you know cut. Um, They've cut funding for retrofitting of homes to, to make it easier for people to, to insulate their homes. They've reduced social housing obligations. Um, and they've overruled progressive policies of local authorities, local authorities around the country who have wanted to make it easier um, uh, to, to build sort of passive houses, which are the, the most energy efficient homes. So um, in some ways it's a challenge, but in other ways I think maybe it's, a, it's an opportunity and I, I, I'll be... When I start calling to doors and as the mm. campaign progresses, I'll be uh, I'll be hammering that. Hammering that message and home. coming from this region, and you know, I remember Darcy Larnigan uh, come sure. the last uh, election, and uh, a lovely young girl from from Carrick Macross wanting change as well. But w- what would you say to the people of Monaghan that you know, or, or Cavan for that instance, very similar oh. counties? You know, there's yeah. issues here. We have the border and that. What could you bring to the fore that the, that other TDs in this area that are in, in government at the moment? can't yeah well first of all um i suppose again i mean i i really believe that that the uh i suppose that the opportunities that we have to put sustainable development back at the at the fore of our politics i really believe that rural ireland and calvin monaghan can benefit hugely from that and that's not something that is that has happened uh under our current under our current regime so for example i just give you give you some examples i mean i think that um I think that communities need to be helped uh, to meet their needs in their own ways. So, for example, just just north of the border, a few miles away, um, you know, it's much easier for local communities to decide to set up um, uh, their own energy cooperative, their own energy company. 
uh, to to provide their their own their own electricity. That's not something that we can do um, here at the moment. And how could that uh, benefit our community? It could benefit our community because we I think we spend 17 million euro per day importing importing our own our own uh, electricity. For example, it could so that that's a, that's a huge uh, waste of money. It's money that's leaving the country every single day. It's also um, as, as the years progress, energy security is going to become um, a much much bigger issue. Um, also, uh, I mean, in, in a couple of weeks ago, um, hundred community organisations around the country signed uh, a declaration called the Community Energy Charter, mm. which calls um, called on the government basically to do more to to support community energy. So there were two organisations in the constituency, Transition Monaghan and uh, Cavan Community Energy Group, which signed that, which is great to see. So, you know, for example, let's give you an example. My own village of Ballinode, where I'm from, uh, many years ago there was a, a pioneering gentleman who... Uh, who uh, powered homes in the village with a with a wind wind turbine, a small wind turbine. So instead of the the kind of crazy mm-hmm. approach which this government has taken to, you know, mega wind farms uh, in the Midlands, which you know without consultation of local residents, you could actually have communities um, deciding, as they do in Germany and many other countries, deciding to take control of the energy grid to actually you know control the energy grid, set up a, a local company to uh, to invest and to maybe have one or two uh, mm. turbines powering a town or a village. And then as a cooperative then, uh, on that basis, the, um, the the profits or the surpluses would then be reinvested. So it's kind of a, a sense of... And just on it, you know, at a time now, um, Michal, well, we're, we're, people are struggling with flooding. I know there's a lot of opposition to the north-south mm. interconnector. Unemployment's an issue. Uh, waiting times in our... In our um, hospitals are, are going up but there's issues there uh, and you're talking about energy and I mean this with all due respect is it just are you, is that your main focus energy and green energy certainly not, well, certainly no. not. in fact my, my, my prior number one on my list of priorities is tackling rural decline you know by creating opportunities for local people to create jobs and entrepreneurship um, you know supporting small farmers in particular um, who have been, been completely left behind um, and I think I think it's all it's all connected as well. Um, you know, okay. this vision for uh, a sustainable a sustainable uh, future whereby local communities can actually meet their needs, um, which is happening at the moment. I mean, you know, there's a lot of talk of, of the so-called recovery at the moment, but really, unless you're you're working for a, a large multinational company in Dublin, um, there's very little sign there's very little sign of recovery, and. Um, and that's also that those economic policies are, are also leaving us very open. Um, you know, there's a lot of signs uh, uh, which show that... Um, sorry, I should apologise. I have a bit of a cold, so my voice is a bit... You're OK. ...at the moment. Um, okay. But just on it, when you, you said you're going to start calling to doors, or when you do, this is what you'll be telling people, when are you going to start out on the canvas? Because we're led to believe, you know, the announcement is imminent in the next couple of weeks yeah. of the date for yeah. the election. Yeah, well, at the moment, I just um, I'm preparing my final, uh, preparing my leases, just finalizing finalizing those. So I hope I hope uh, by this weekend to be able to to be able to start calling on doors, and it's, it's all it's full steam ahead uh, from here on in for the next the next number of weeks. Um, yeah, I I think it's imminent as well. So um, and I would also say as well that I have I'll be trying to keep an active. Um, as I'm trying to, I suppose, appeal as well to, to, to younger voters and people maybe who are somewhat uh, perhaps disenfranchised with politics. I'm hoping to make as much use of social media and videos and, uh, and my website as possible. So I'll be updating that with, with lots of content uh, um, over the coming, coming weeks also. Michal O'Callaghan there, a native of Ballinode, the Green Party candidate for the Cavan Monaghan constituency come the next general election.